that how are you going to make sure that mail-in ballots and voter fraud, which we heard from a lot of people in line, was an issue front and center. They're very concerned about mail-in voting. So forget the past. What are you going to do to make sure we don't have problems going forward? If you have mail-in voting, you automatically have fraud. If you have okay, well, there's mail-in voting in Florida, That's and right. you won huge. That's right. When Laura Ingram is fact-checking you, you know it's bad. I think, although they hate me so much, I'm, I think if I got out there, still, let's pursue this guy. We can't stand this guy. Look, I won an election that wasn't supposed to be winnable. I then did much better the second time. I won't get into it, but I did because of Fox. But I, won, I did a much better job the second time. We got millions and millions of more votes the second time. And now we're doing much better than we did the second time and the first time, almost put together. Are we you are, a, are you a potential spirit, political you know, prisoner, sir? Well, I think because of the fact that I'm doing so well, that I'm beating Biden at a level that they've never seen before, this is not supposed to happen. You know, it's much easier for a Democrat yeah. to run. Much easier. Trump tells Laura Ingram there will be automatic fraud. It's more like we will see Trump complain automatically because the reality is Trump's statements have nothing to do with reality. They have never had anything to do with reality. But they say Joe Biden, there's no evidence that Joe Biden received any financial benefit personally. And to that, you say? Well, he's got a lot of houses all over the place and he's never been paid more than about $179,000, I guess, is the top. Look. Dale joins me now with a fact check of what Trump said and what's actually true in it. Let's start with the claim about Ukraine. Let's listen. First thing I get on the phone is with the European nations who are in for 25% of what we're in. We're in for over $200 billion. They're in for $35 billion. It's been about $100 billion so far, but it will be $160 it's, it's a difference of $150 billion. They've got to start paying up. So, Daniel, what's going on there, really? Abby, those numbers appear pulled out of thin air. They're not even close to true. According to one reputable tracker of aid to Ukraine, the Kiel Institute, which is based in Germany, it is actually EU countries and EU institutions that are far outpacing the US when it comes to aid commitments to Ukraine. 156 billion for the EU, uh, starting in 2022, around when the war began, to 73 billion to the US. No, those are commitments, not allocations, not actual spending. If you look at actual spending, it's closer, but even then, Abby, the EU you outpaces the United States. We know this because there are actual facts in relation to mail-in ballots, and we know this because, as in this case, he complains about the occurrence of fraud well before it could ever occur. Let's take what he said before the election of 2020. He was already setting up an excuse for his loss and alleging fraud before the counting even started. At that time, he claimed, quote, ballots will be printed by foreign countries and others. It will be the scandal of our times. End quote. If you haven't heard that allegation in a while, it's because it turns out ballots are printed on very specific stock paper with very specific barcode tracking. If Trump does lose, he will insist that it was not the result of voters choosing Joe Biden over him, but rather a function of those cheating Democrats and their rigged mail-in ballot scheme. Because again, Donald Trump doesn't lose. And the only way he could lose is if he was cheated in some way. So if he loses, it must have been cheating. It's math. So because Trump simply cannot be gracious in defeat or even accept defeat, there's a real possibility he never actually concedes the race if he loses. Biden, Trump's presumptive general election opponent, sure seems to be convinced that that's what's going to happen. Quote, if I'm president, I promise you it's going to be needed on the day I'm officially elected, before I'm sworn in, even though he'll probably contest we didn't win, I'm going to immediately have to be on the phone with key European and Asian leaders to tell them America's back. America's back, end quote. That was Biden at a fundraiser in late May. If Trump pulls something like this, it will jeopardize our long-standing tradition of peaceful transfers of power and undermine the very roots of our democratic system that we are so proud of. He also claimed at the time that the election was going to be stolen because, quote, kids go and they raid the mailboxes and they hand them to people signing the ballots down at the end of the street, end quote. I think he forgot to add during the cover of night because surely homeowners would see this gang of ballot stealing children congregating at the end of their streets. First of all, I won in 2020 by a lot, okay? 
You Let's know, get that straight. I won in 2020. You know that this, and if you look at all of the tapes, if you look at shows. everything that you want to look at, you take a look at Truth to Vote, where they have people stuffing the ballot boxes on tapes, or Mr. President, let's go to recent. Well, wait a minute. Let's go to recent. FBI Twitter. Let's go to recent. The 51 agents. All corrupt stuff, Brett. Understand about all, the Hunter Biden. Well, no, but that's cheating on things, the election. But, but that's cheating on the election. You lost the 2020 election. Uh, Brett. Uh, you take a look at all of the stuffed ballots. You take a look at all of the things, including things like the 51 intelligence there were, agents. There were recounts in all of the swing states. There was not significant right, widespread We're trying fraud. to get recounts, real recounts, not just numbers of votes Widespread cast. corruption. There was not a sense of that. There were lawsuits, more than 50 of them, by your lawyers, some in front of Brett, judges, judges that you appointed. Look at Wisconsin. That came out with Wisconsin no evidence. Is, Brett, Wisconsin has practically admitted it was rigged. Other states are doing the same right now and it's continuing on it was a of every election. potential case of voter fraud in six battleground states and they found fewer than 475 cases you know why because they didn't effective. look at the right things okay Brett. are you going they to were be counting they were counting ballots not the authenticity of the ballot the ballots were fake ballots. You had, this I was asked, a very rigged election. Are you election. going to go, this is how you're going to tell that independent suburban no, woman no, voter no. to vote we're for We're off to winning an election. I bring up these statements not purely for nostalgia, but because if you notice, he has gotten less specific about his allegation of mail fraud. Surely after investigating and tracking the fraudulent mail-in ballots, he would become more specific, have at least one better argument, after all these years, he doesn't because there is none. Instead, he has the awkward discussion with Fox, where Fox, not exactly wanting to get sued again, has to fact check him and his absurd claim that the fraud is just, quote, rampant. How are you going to make sure that mail-in ballots and voter fraud, which we heard from a lot of people in line, was an issue front and center? They're very concerned about mail-in voting. So... Forget the past. What are you going to do to make sure we don't have problems going forward? If you have mail-in voting, you automatically have fraud. If you have okay, well, there's mail-in voting in Florida, That's and right. you won huge. That's right. If you have it, you're going to have fraud. But you won. Because you don't have any. When you go into a voting place, like you go into one in a, in a properly run state, they look at you. They give you give voter ID. You give all sorts of identification. I mean, it would be very hard to cheat in a mass scale. When you send out millions like California, I think they send out 36 million ballots. They don't have a voting booth in the whole place. And then millions of ballots yeah. come back. Nobody knows where they're coming from. Right, but what are you going to do about it? Uh, the way you win is by swamping them. The way you win is by swamping them. You got to have and we're going to swamp. I'll tell you what I've. I did great in the first election. I did much better in the second. First of all, let's break down his argument that in-person voting is more secure because of the argument that there are ID checks. In fact, only 23 states require photo IDs when someone votes in person. He specifically calls out California for the millions of ballots they mail out, as if being the most populous state in the country is a bad thing. Being from California, I can say our mail-in ballot procedure is pretty amazing. I get an email when my ballot is received and another when my ballot is counted. Not only does it give me some peace of mind, it helps prevent fraud. Fraud. As I would get notified if someone else sent in my ballot. Safeguards. What an ocean. Washington state has had mail-in ballot voting since 2005 and has never experienced anything close to widespread fraud. There's always the chance for fraud, whether it's in person or in mail-in ballots. But we are talking at the most in election cycles, dozens, not hundreds, and certainly not thousands. For example, in 2016, in the entire state of Washington, there were 74 questionable votes. It's because mail-in ballots have the same level of stringent safeguards. They have tracking, they have stringent registration, and their counting requirements are all safeguarded as they are in person. The fact is, Trump himself proved to us that mail-in ballots are as safe when him and his cohort of lawyers filed numerous lawsuits in 2020 claiming voter fraud 
but found zero evidence to back it up. The cases ended up getting dismissed and his lawyers in trouble for making false claims to the court. These were different judges appointed by different presidents in different states, all coming to the same conclusion, all upholding the voting and counting of mail-in ballots. Even the Supreme Court, with all his appointees, declined to take his case. The truth is, Trump doesn't like mail-in ballots because more people vote that way. If you have mail-in voting, you automatically have fraud. Since Trump was already creating distrust around mail-in ballots leading up to the 2020 election, I volunteered as a part of team of lawyers that did voter protection work. There was so much misinformation from the MAGA crowd. We were trying to just safeguard the most essential part of our democracy, voting. We worked throughout the country. I was in North Carolina. There was one situation where a legal case was filed regarding certain mail-in ballots. And so pending the outcome of the litigation, the counting of those ballots was paused. Now, we know that one of the things that make our elections so safe in this country is how localized our elections are. It's true that every state has their own rules around elections, but in addition, every county runs their own elections. So for example, North Carolina has 100 different county board of elections that runs the elections in each county. So when this legal filing paused the counting, I and the rest of the team called each county to determine how many ballots were affected and what they were doing with those ballots. The answers I got were very professional and organized. They knew exactly how many ballots were affected, had logged them in a separate chart and locked them in a safe. Sometimes the amount of ballots we were talking about was only 10 or 12 or three or four, but didn't matter how many, they were keeping them all very safe. The fact is that the professionals and volunteers that work at a local level of our elections take their jobs very seriously and are very capable. We also can, should, and do monitor them all the time time. This is how to protect our democracy. Not by lying about kids stealing ballots, not by lying to Fox, and certainly not by lying to the courts. The irony, of course, with Trump trying to convince voters that mail-in ballot is full of fraud, is what it does is it makes MAGA voters less likely to vote. Do you know how hard it is to get anybody to vote? I've also worked on several different get out the votes for campaigns. And other than people like us, they're very interested in politics. It's very difficult to get somebody to vote. That's why each campaign tries to have a so many different contacts with one voter, why they send something in the mail, why they call you, why they text you, because it's actually hard to get the people on the sidelines to vote, and that's how you win elections. So when Trump sits there and tells MAGA voters that California is so full of fraud, fraud, it may not hurt him because California is likely to go with Biden, but it hurts the House Republicans, because California has some very Republican districts. And those are important swing districts that decide the House and who controls the House. But are we going to hear Speaker Mike Johnson say that, no, actually, voting in California is safe? Are we going to hear any Republican say that voting in California is safe? No, they're so afraid to go against Trump that they're willing to lose their own power and not correct him in this falsehood. And you wonder why, because as we know, Trump is only about himself, and he's willing to talk about the lie of the fraud of the ballots, even if it costs every other MAGA Republican, their seat. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.